This battery is about 30% cheaper than other common batteries on the market at only 14 cents per watt hour. It's pretty common to find batteries closer to about 20 cents per watt hour, so I wanna see if this battery is any good. I don't know how to say the name of this company, Mahopowos, MH Powos. I don't know how they come up with these weird names, but there's some other funny peculiarities with this battery, and I wanna go over all of those details, as well as the efficiency test that I got out of it, what it looks like on the inside, is it safe? That way, if you're building your own DIY system, you can know if you should look at these batteries or not. My name's Ben, this is the Minuteman Solar YouTube channel. I appreciate you being here. The MH Powos 12.8 volt, 200 amp hour battery is a very simple battery. It doesn't have any of those special features that you find in more expensive batteries. That's what's so great about it. I actually personally prefer a very simple battery, but those batteries with those extra features do play a role, such as the Epoch batteries. They have built-in heaters. They're marine grade, meaning they can get wet and not have any issues. This can also get wet and not have any issues because it's completely enclosed. It's pretty easy to move around. It's not very heavy, but I honestly think this is twice as big as it needs to be. There are a lot of the mini line batteries coming out now that are almost about two thirds of this size for about 50% more capacity. I wanted to see what the real capacity was of this, so I hooked up my inverter and a bunch of light bulbs, that way it could drain it at a 0.2C discharge. 0.2C just means I'm taking 20% of the total capacity and putting that on the battery as a load. This is 2,580 watt hours, so I need somewhere close to about a 500 watt load, or 20% of the capacity, to give a very accurate idea of how much capacity the battery actually has. In order to do that, I set up a special meter on the top, which is tracking the power from the battery, not from the inverter. This is being measured before the energy reaches the inverter. Because when you convert DC power to AC power, or invert it, you have a conversion loss because you're switching from one energy type to another. So I don't want to measure that, I want to measure the battery. I was really surprised to see that I got well over 200 amp hours out of this at 212 amp hours. I ended up getting 2.73 kilowatt hours instead of 2.58. That was a really great result, so I wanted to check inside and see how they're able to do this. Now these batteries are actually pretty easy to open up. This lid here is just glued on. I find that the easiest thing is a chisel. All you're doing is using that really fine point to break the seal between the bottom case and the top case and then start prying. You don't have to hit it with a Sawzall or a multi-tool or anything like that. So by one regard, you could theoretically service these as long as the battery cells themselves have the right equipment on them. But when I opened this up, I was absolutely amazed at how much dead space is inside of here. I don't know if MH Poos has a reason to have this much dead space, but there's close to about five inches of space on either side of the battery from the front to back. And then from side to side, there was at least another three quarters of an inch all surrounded by foam padding. So one of the really cool things that you could do with a battery like this that Jason from the Jasonoid channel has done is you could convert this to be its own mini solar generator. Because there's so much dead space in here, you could easily move the battery cells to one side if you needed to, put a small inverter with a very small charge controller, and then put your own outlets on the outside of this, which would be a really cool, fun thing to do. Rather than taking an ammo can or another plastic enclosure, just use this one because there's so much space in it. The battery cells were completely covered in a yellow insulating board. You can tell this was put together by hand for sure. Where the positive cable comes off the battery, you can tell that the cut in the fiber board is basically done by hand, but I did find that a very alarming cut on one of the positive cables. So there may be some quality control issues there. It didn't go through the sheathing, but that's absolutely a big concern. The insulation board is held together with a fibrous tape, which was really easy to cut open and was not applied very neatly. Once I peeled back the insulation board, I could see that the bus bars between the batteries were laser welded into place. This is a pretty common way for companies to put batteries together. Personally, I prefer to see bolts threaded into the bus bar because then if one cell dies, you can actually remove the bus bar and remove the bolts and pull that cell out and theoretically replace it. Realistically though, these batteries are getting so cheap, you probably wouldn't ever do that. But I was very surprised to see that there were eight battery cells in here, not four. So that's how they get to the 12.8 volt and 200 amp hour rating. The QR code on the top allows you to find out all of the information about the battery cells being used. It doesn't look like they've been tampered with, so they look like original QR codes. So by using this website, I can look up the QR code and find all of the information. 
So now I can see it's made by Great Power. It's a Life PO4 cell. Each one's 100 amp hours. Each one's 3.2 volts. And it was manufactured in early October of 2024. So at the time of filming this, these cells are already almost a year old. I don't think it's a big deal that cells that have not been used have been sitting that long. But other manufacturers that I've done tests on of their batteries looking up their QR codes, they were all manufactured in 2025. So MH Pobos must have got some sort of deal on these batteries because they've been sitting for a while and that's one of the reasons why it's probably so cheap. To read the QR code of a battery, you use all of the numbers that are surrounding the QR code, punch that into that website, It'll tell you the basic information, but each one of those numbers has a meaning and you can see here, this is what it breaks down to be. So it's a very long code, tells you everything from the manufacturer, it gives you the cell type, all sorts of information. That way you can decode what it means. I believe there's also a phone app where you can scan the QR code and it tells you all of that information for you. The thing that I didn't really like to see inside of here is that there's only one temperature sensor and it's only on the battery closest to the BMS. I also couldn't really get access to the BMS without completely destroying everything in side, but the BMS is directly adjacent to the batteries, which means if the batteries get warm, that BMS is going to heat up pretty quickly. I wouldn't put any heavy loads on this for an extended period of time. That's going to make the cells get pretty warm and probably trigger that heat sensor. I also didn't like how the main battery cables were soldered to the batteries. It just looked very poor quality and then it was gobbed on with some insulating glue. It just didn't look very professional. To put this all back together, I simply re-taped everything closed and I used some silicone glue along the inside of the lid here. I just cleaned out all of the old glue, put in new glue, put this on and then clamped it shut. And now it's looking like it's brand new again. Getting into the battery is pretty easy. Replacing cells, not really that easy. But when it comes to price, this is only $360 on Amazon. And that's where I'm getting that 14 cents per watt hour price. But if you go to their website, it's actually $420. I first got introduced to MH Powos when I found their folding solar panel. It's a 400 watt folding solar panel. That's the most affordable one that I've seen at $1 per watt. So it looks like they're mostly into making solar panels, but they do have a little side gig of making some batteries. Overall, I've not heard any bad reviews about MH Powos, but I don't know what the customer service and warranty service is like. If you have an issue, I don't know how well they're going to handle that. One of the funny things I found on here is that on the application area on the sticker, it tells you it's meant for RVs, campers, and out dockers activities. They misspelled outdoors. And those are the funny quirks that you find with companies that are straight out of China making equipment like this. I honestly don't think there's anything wrong with this battery. There's nothing special about it. It's a very basic, simple battery that didn't give me any problems at all. I wouldn't use it in a hot environment, such as in an RV that's out in the desert for an extended period of time, running a lot of stuff. But that's a pretty specific scenario. Honestly, I think it's a perfectly fine battery, but there are more affordable batteries with more energy density in them that are even smaller in size. So be aware of that before you buy an MH Powos. I think it's gonna work fine if you do buy one, but there are some better deals out there. And just so you're aware of the relationship between MH Powos and me, they sent this battery out for an honest and fair review. They do not get to edit this video or tell me what to say or not to say. That's how it is with all of my videos. If you found this video helpful, I think you'll also find this video very helpful to you. So make sure to check that out. And if you have any questions about this type of equipment or what you need to run your house, your RV, whatever it is, shoot me an email to info at poweredportablesolar.com, soon to be info at minutemansolar.com.